Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here. Today we're looking at Marvel Comics Group adaptation of the Blade Runner film from 1982. Check out this freaking amazing cover. Can't wait to show it to you. So hit subscribe, hit like, and I'll be right back. It's Troy TV. All right, so um, this is a gorgeous cover here. It's signed Anderson. I'm assuming that's Brent Anderson. Um, Marvel, it's, it's funny, I watched this great interview with uh, Jim Shooter on Comic Historians. It's like eight hours long, but it's totally worth it. Jim Shooter is like a very divisive person. I've always kind of respected him as the editor-in-chief of Marvel from my heyday. Like, I always saw him and his name and thought, you know, he was doing an amazing job because I loved all the comic books that were coming out under him. So what do I know? But anyway, the interview, uh, he says, you know, he like Marvel was kind not always, you know, owned by Disney and doing well. And, you know, they uh, I feel like they've faced and even went through bankruptcy and, um, you know, had definite low points in the company. So Jim Shooter was kind of always looking for ways to make money. And one of those ways was by doing comic book adaptions and of films. And that's why you see so many and so many random ones. And, but so many good ones like Star Wars and just, I mean, tons of them. Anyway, adapted by Archie Goodwin, penciled by Al Williamson um, and Carlos Garzon. Uh, inked by Al Williamson, Williamson, Carlos Garzon, Dan Green, Ralph Reese, colored by the amazing Marie Severin, letters by Ed King, never heard of him, edited by Jim Salakrup, of course, he's a legendary Marvel editor, um, and editor-in-chief Jim Shooter. I love this art. Al Williamson is, like, such a great artist and so perfect for this. Um, can you believe I don't think I've ever seen Blade Runner? And I don't even know why I own this number two of um, a two-part movie adaption without number one, unless I had number one and I just lost it. But it could have been this amazing cover that made me buy it because it is just freaking gorgeous. And I love that. 1982 kids. So that's like 40 years old. Wow, that's kind of crazy. Sean Young, speaking of crazy. Um... I wonder if she just got a bad rap. Like she, like she notoriously like stalked Tim Burton, dressing as Catwoman, trying to get the role of Catwoman in the Batman movie and other weird stuff. I think she kind of was a stalker for James Woods too, but whatever, you know, oh, that's cool. That's the Daryl Hannah Cope character. Love this art. Oh my God, it's so good and juicy. It's funny because Al Williamson um, and apparently Carlos Garzon are like such great traditional like comic book artists. I know mostly know Al Williamson as an inker. Um, one of my favorite uh, jobs is uh, his work over Daredevil or John Romita Jr. on Daredevil. I thought they made a great team, and really just lush, gorgeous pencils here. This is like some great classic comic book art, but it's totally cool and giving me like the vibe of the movie too. Even though I don't think I've ever seen it. But I said that, didn't I? Love this zip tone here. I wish this was on better paper, though, because I imagine as amazing as the art looks right now, it would be so much better. Oh, my God. Like, I just lost my mind. That is mind-blowing. Like, what a great double-page spread there. The, see, this is this is a perfect example of how to, how to utilize the comic book art form because, I mean, Blade Runner is such a great movie. What could you possibly expect from a comic book that y you can't get on film. And this shows that uh, comic book adaptions of movies definitely have their artistic merit and worth and can be just as gorgeous, if not more so. That amazing freaking this haunts me every time I turn this page, this gorgeous Michael Golden cover. Like, why didn't I send away from that? Like, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't have it now because I don't think I have any of my old posters, but still to stare at that gorgeousness of Michael Golden doing the entire Marvel universe in one poster. I mean, amazing, right? They need to reissue this. This needs to be like, 
I don't know, a mural. Maybe it should be a mural in my, my house. I'll just <laughs> make that happen somehow. I don't know if everyone who lives here would appreciate that, but you know, what do I care? Anyway, I can't get over this art. This, <laughs> I mean, okay, so I feel bad to say, I love this Daryl Hannah character, of course, because I'm always partial to the blondes, but um, this is just some amazing artwork. And I love that they just put their all into it. There's so many talented artists. I love, I mean, I don't have to sell you on comic book art, right? I mean, if you're watching, nobody in their right mind would, well, I guess you could be a Blade Runner fan. But now you're seeing, if you are a Blade Runner fan, that this, oh my gosh, another amazing use of Zipatone. Zipatone is like the best thing ever. I love it. Um, but now you're seeing the merits and worthiness of this comic book adaptation, and you need to go get it. Or at least read it, because it's cool. It's totally worth looking at the art. Boy, that kind of ends like on a, just a little, shh, whatever. Anyway, so that's Blade Runner, Marvel Comics Group uh, adaption. Archie Goodwin, Al Williamson, Carlos Garzon, amazing. Totally gorgeous cover. The cover alone is worth having. Like, this needs to be a poster. And also a mural, once again. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, hit like, share my content, and I'll bring you some more later. Thanks, guys.